That's very interesting. This is the case when we understand democracy to be um, only applicable to member states. And in fact, uh, in the way in which democratic citizenship works in Europe today, in so many ways, it results in what Rory is saying. Because democracy means, especially understood in the nation state uh, sense of that term, it's something that takes place within the member state. So democracy operates in the UK, democracy operates in Germany, citizens vote, citizens deliberate on policy issues, they uh, elect or unelect uh, officials, bring issues to the public uh, agenda, they demonstrate, they uh, refuse, and so on. So all sorts of repertoires of actions that are available for citizens of member states to indicate that they are exercising their democratic rights. Now, when it comes to exercising democratic rights in Europe, it's much more complicated. First of all, the, uh, uh, the parliament has been in operation only for a few years. It's, it's very recent. But also European citizens do not directly or didn't used to directly elect European uh, members of parliament. That's also a very recent experience. For a variety of reasons, many people have called this phenomenon democratic deficit in the European Union. That's a, one phrase that's um, worth remembering. Now, democratic deficit means that European Union, although a significant jurisdiction and takes many decisions impacting on everyday lives of people, many of those decisions are not democratically and directly accountable to its citizens. Rather, there are indirect and circuitous ways in which these decisions are given. Um, many people don't think, for example, that the Parliament, European Parliament, is an effective mechanism of decision making. And the European Commission, which is the equivalent of, let's say, American or British government, uh, civil service, the Commission, it's often called EC, European Commission, the way it makes decisions are often done by experts. So let me give you one example in the way in which uh, European democratic process is uh, can be said to be lacking or in deficit. Um, I don't know to what extent you have followed the most recent financial crisis and especially the tension between Greece, Italy, Spain, European Central Bank, European Commission, and the member state uh, governments, especially German government, French government, and the British government. So an interesting phenomenon that's taking place over the last two years, deep tension between uh, member states and the European Commission about how, to what extent, to bail out or help um, um, member states out of a financial crisis. Now, in the case of the United States, as you know, whether we are critical of this act or not, I'm going to leave aside. Uh, Obama administration has pumped in, as it were, trillions of dollars into American economy and bailed out, literally, in some cases individuals, some cases organizations, some cases uh, corporations such as uh, banks, in some cases even governments, uh, municipal governments, and I don't know if there was a state government directly having been helped by um, the, um, the bailout. Now, I can't not, so you'd be the judge. I cannot uh, call it, in fact, a um, evidence for that. So now just think of that equivalent of that in Europe. Um, what would that be is that when Obama administration decided to do that, let's say North Carolina says, no, it shouldn't do that, and it blocks, it attempts to block the um, bailout or the pumping in uh, money into economy. And then California comes and says, no, this is absolutely necessary, we need it, and a, bottle, a battle ensues. Of course, that's unthinkable in the United States case because the United States government has the right to make that decision for all its 
uh, states. Whereas in Europe, there is no such right. It has to be reached by argument amongst member states, their elected governments, with the European Commission, which is not elected. And these debates takes place. There is absolutely no space for European citizens to enter into it and register satisfaction or dissatisfaction with it. There is no mechanism. This is something that is negotiated between member states and the Commission. And all you hear about the British Prime Minister, German Chancellor and the French President arguing among, amongst themselves whether and to what extent Greek, Spanish and Italian economies should be helped by European Central Bank. This technically impacts on every single citizen, taxpaying citizen in the Union and yet not one single one of them has a right to say anything in that deliberation. That's one example of a democratic deficit in the European Union. Those decisions are made and deliberated amongst a policy, technical and political elite that the citizens don't have um, access to. So that comes back to Rory's question, well, democracy in this case, although fundamental principle of, of the European Union, is not necessarily really operating. And at the local level, member state level, democracy is not conducive to uh, providing a European Union-wide uh, democratic forum, as it were. And that uh, assessment is, in fact, uh, correct, something that I have to um, agree with. But of course, you might ask, well, what can be done? Well, that's a very, very hard question, so I can't answer that one. And it's an ongoing debate in Europe, how the democratic deficit can be addressed.